Good morning, good morning, good morning to all my YouTube viewers and all our Facebook viewers. Another blessed day. Another day to give God thanks and praise. Another day, April 16th, 2021, whereby we can just get excited about God and just give him some praise because he's worthy to be praised. Another day when we can say that we are standing on the promises of Almighty God. Not on top of our graves as some people say. And I'm not standing on top of any grave. I'm standing on the promises of Almighty God and his promises are yea and amen. Glory to Almighty God. And so this morning we just want to lift up praises, high praises to God, for He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy, He's worthy, He's worthy. And we, we who are alive this morning can tell that God is worthy to be praised. We don't deserve life. We do not deserve an ounce of life. But guess what? God's grace, the undeserving, unmerited favor of God is upon us. Mighty heavens, the undeserving favor. Look at some of the things that we have done, even up to yesterday, last night. Look at some of the things that we have thought of. Look at some of the things that we have said. And yet we are still here in the land of the living. God is good. He has given us his grace, his eternal grace, which has appeared unto all men, as the word of God says. And we are beneficiaries of God's grace. So this morning we have a right to praise God. Good morning, Sister Sidney Bailey. Good morning, Sister Pauline Simmons. The Beverly Malgi. Good morning. Shane, Paulette, Kimoya, Kellitz. Good morning. Glory to Almighty God. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. And we have a right to be praising God today. We don't deserve it. But when we think about the many persons this morning who got up, can't see. They, they went to bed last night seeing, but this morning they get up and they can't see. When we think about the many persons who got up this morning, tried to come off their beds, but they can't stand it. The knees can't manage it, fails them. The, the many persons who had to be rushed off to the hospital are some who have been taken to the morgue. And look at us now. We are still here. God is good. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Glory to Almighty God. And we have a right to praise Him. Let everything that have breath praise Almighty God. So if you think you have nothing to praise God for this morning, look at yourself. Stand in front of the mirror and look at you. Look at yourself. The little pain that you are feeling is nothing compared to your life that you have still. For whilst there is life, there is hope. The good Lord of heaven bless you all. As we continue with our devotional exercise, our final in the series of the Beatitudes this morning, and we're looking at two verses from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Grab your Bibles. Remember, we're reading from the Bible. It is a textbook. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Good morning, Sister Hopi. God bless you. New York. Hallelujah. Glory to Almighty God. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Blessed are ye 
Reading from the King James Version. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Good morning, Sister Violet Hendricks. Good morning, Sister Anne Wisdom. Sister Hutton is watching from Virginia. Good morning. Good morning to the family of Sister Hopi Ellis. Minister Hopi Ellis, good morning to your family. Good morning, Brother Panther and the Sister Panther and family. Bless you. Glory to God. God bless you on your job, sir. Good Lord, keep you as you are on your job and checking in. The blessings of God be upon you. Let us pray. Welcome on board, Brother T, Brother Noel Chambers. Let us pray for insight and foresight. We need God's intervention. We need God to open our knowledge this morning. Our eyes to understand his word. Good morning, Sister Emma King. Sister Mina, God bless you. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you this morning. Another beautiful day. Another day when you have caused us to be alive. Had nothing to do with our alarm clocks. Had nothing to do with our parents waking us up. Had nothing to do with our wives or husbands waking us up. It is all in your hands. And so God, if you did not wake us up this morning, the alarm clock would still be making noise. The family member that touched us would still be pushing and crying. But thanks be to God, morning by morning, new mercies we see. And so God, we ask for your knowledge in our lives today. Touch our intellects. Touch us, God. Give us insight and foresight. Allow us to see where you want us to see. Allow us to walk in your steps as we go into another devotion this morning. Bless those who are coming online on Facebook and on YouTube. Bless our hearts today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome and board, Sister Tracy Alexander and Sister Lane. Good morning. Glory to Almighty God. And if I missed anyone while we were in prayer, I just want to say to you, good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook, YouTube viewers. Good morning. God bless your hearts. Good morning to my family up there in Canada. My sisters, Sandra, Judith, Audrey, Bikisha, my stepmom. Good morning to you, Mrs. Hazel Pasco. Good morning, my sister in Westmoreland, Angela. My aunt Doreen. Other family members. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Glory to Almighty God. As you join us. Morning, Sister Reed. Morning, Sister Lola Barnett. We prayed for you yesterday. And we believe God, that God put his hand on you, touched your hip. God is a healer. He's the healer, Jehovah Rapha. And we're believing God that you are healed in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This morning, the topic that we are speaking on is rejoice in persecution. Rejoice in persecution. Your son, Donovan McGrowder. God bless you. He's watching from New York, Bronx, to be exact. God bless you. So just recapping as usual, we have gone through most of the Beatitudes of Jesus Christ. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Welcome on board, Sister Suzette. Peter McEachron, God bless you. And Sister Curlin Burrell, God bless you. Welcome on board this morning. Today we are looking at verses 11 and 12. It was read earlier, but for those who joined late. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. They shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. God bless you, Mr. Andrea Ladley Paulette Williams. Welcome on board. Amen. From the first to the eighth beatitude, Jesus was addressing the multitudes as a whole. Blessed are they, blessed are those, blessed are the poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers. All of these applied to the crowd, the multitude that Jesus was speaking to. Even though he was speaking on the fact that as Christians, these are the attitudes we should possess. He was also addressing the crowd as a whole from the first to the eighth beatitude. But now in verse 11, the focus has shifted. Jesus now says, blessed are you. Glory to Almighty God. Amen. Jesus was now pronouncing a personal blessing on the individual. This now becomes a personal thing. Your walk with God is personal. Amen. Let me say that again. Your walk with God is personal. It doesn't matter what crowd you are in. You have a personal walk with God. You have to maintain a personal relationship with God. Because guess what? Your own personal trials, they are yours. They're coming to you alone. It doesn't matter if you're married, your husband and your wife, you love each other and you're sleeping together and you're doing everything together. When trials come upon you, they come upon you as an individual. You may share them with your family members. You may share them with your loved ones. But guess what? The trials and the crosses that you face, they are your own own personal situation it all come down, comes down to you good morning sister Colette Loney welcome on board in the gospel of Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Jesus said to them all if anyone will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me daily glory to almighty God it is a personal walk. It is a personal lifestyle with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship between you and God. And so when Jesus began to speak here in verse 11, he says, blessed are you. I'm leaving the crowd and I am now speaking to you as an individual. I want to say to you that are joined, have joined this morning by Facebook, by YouTube. As an individual, Jesus is addressing you. Blessed are you. Glory to Almighty God. Because it is a personal thing now. He was closing out the Beatitudes. Blessed are you. Amen. 
And so Jesus says to the thousands that were gathered to hear him, When men shall revile you, and the word revile means to criticize in an abusive and angry, insulting manner. This according to Oxford languages. Have you ever received that kind of treatment as a child of God for the sake of the gospel? I remember when I was back in my home church in Savannah Lamar. Yes, the young people went on the street to do evangelism. We distributed tracts. And I remember walking up to a gentleman in a car to give him a tract just to save his wretched soul from dying and go, going to hell. And I tell you something, the man insulted me. And I had to jump out of the way because he almost bounced me down with his car. My God, revile. Blessed are you when men shall revile you. Sometimes you speak to people about Jesus Christ and them tell you all kind of illicit, indecent languages. They curse you out. They criticize you. Abusive and angry, insulting way. Jesus says, when men shall do these things to you, when women, when persons, because men here is, is, is not speaking to the, the, the male gender, but men here is speaking to man and woman, female and male. Doesn't matter when people shall revile you, when people criticize you in an abusive and angry, insulting manner. Jesus says, blessed are you, glory to almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Almighty God. Sometimes you feel like you, you feel so small and you feel ashamed. That's why some people don't bother to evangelize. They don't want to talk to anybody because they are afraid of insult and afraid to be, to be, to be you know, disrespected by people. But it's okay to be insulted for the sake of Christ. That's what Jesus says here. It's okay if you are insulted for the gospel's sake. It is okay when you preach and people curse you. It is okay. Blessed are you when they persecute you. And yesterday we gave the definition of persecution. Is, it is cruel and in unfair treatment of a person or group because of their religious or political beliefs. When men shall revile you and persecute you. Blessed are you. Jesus continues, he says, when they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake remember now when they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely the qualifying word here is falsely peter says when they point their fingers at you make sure it is a false criticism it is a false report they have no back it if they have no 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 evidence against you it is because they just want to revile you and persecute you Jesus said, blessed are you. Because the truth is, some of us are guilty when they point fingers at us. Some of us are guilty. Guilty of what they are saying. They are speaking the truth. So Jesus could not just leave it there and say, you know, you are blessed when they shall say all manner of evil against you. Jesus had to qualify the statement by saying, falsely, for my sake. When they say it against you, when they lie on you, when they slander you, when they malign you. Amen, church. When they do all these things to you, God is saying to you today, you are blessed. Blessed are you. Jesus was the, the best person to speak like this because he was slandered. You remember Jesus was called what? Wine Bieber. They said that he was possessed by Beelzebub, the master of demons. This is what they said about Jesus. Look at Matthew 10 verses 23 to 25. The word of God says, But when they persecute you in this city, Jesus says, Flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, You shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he is as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house, Beelzebub, how much more 
shall they call them of the household? One scripture says, if they do it in the green tree, what won't they do in the dry tree? My God, if they did it to Jesus, what, what won't they do to you and I? Glory to Almighty God. So this morning when you are persecuted, rejoice. Be happy. Happy up yourself. Jump for joy. Jump up and down and just praise God when things are done to you. When you are persecuted, when you are lied upon, when you are slandered, maligned. For the sake of Christ. When you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you're carrying out your functions and people revile you and persecute you and say all manner of things against you for the sake of the gospel, blessed are you. Welcome on board, Sister Earth King and your family from over there in Montego Bay. Bless your hearts. You as a believer will be reviled. It's not a bed of rose. One songwriter says, not, and it's not an easy road. Many see the glamour and them think a better rose. It's not an easy road. I want to say to us as believers, many of us when we got saved, we never saw this. I did not see this. I was told that it's the easy life. It's the good life. It's the best life. Yes, it is the best life. But I never saw the bumps in the road. I never saw that people could hate Christians. I never saw that people could revile uh, against Christians and, and persecute Christians. I never saw those things. I wasn't a Bible reader. I wasn't a Bible scholar. But my God, the day I got saved and the day that I got baptized and came in the church, one of my good friends looked at me and says, ah, who fool you up? Giving you two weeks. But thanks be to God. These two weeks has multiplied. And they have turned into years. I've been serving God for three decades. Amen. I fell down many times. But I get up again. For the saint is just a sinner. Who fell down. But got up. Got a lot of persecution. A lot of hits. Yes. Persecuted, lied upon, falsely accused, maligned and slandered, hated. But guess what? That is how the prophets before us were treated. That's what Jesus says. Remember, you are not the only one who have been down this road. The prophets before you got the same and even worse treatment. Jesus says when you are treated that way, however, rejoice and be happy for you are blessed. In verse 12 says, this is how James, James put it this way in, in James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4. Hear what brother James says. My brethren, and I love this, hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, diverse trials, different temptations, different trials. Count it all joy, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. My God, you are behaving yourself as a child of God, doing the things that God wants you to do. And then all of a sudden you are falsely accused. All of a sudden some people just gang up against you and start to tell lies on you. Have you ever been there? And sometimes when these lies are told, it's better you don't say anything. Don't try to defend it. Just leave it alone. Glory to God. Because the more you try to defend, the more you put yourself in deep. Leave it alone. For God will vindicate you. Blessed are you when all of these things come upon you. Count it all joy, James says. For this is just working out the better part of you. Glory to God. God is going to use this to bring out the best part of you. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I am going to wait until my change comes. Rejoice in your persecution. Acts chapter 5, verses 40 and 41 reads, When you are being hit down, and you know that it is for the sake of Jesus Christ, when you apply for a job, and you don't get the call because you put Christianity. 
on your on your your resume you you decide that you're not hiding your salvation from anybody and you you write that you're a christian because that is on your resume and when you put it on your resume and they don't call you or even if they call you to the interview they tell you sorry you can't get the job hear what acts chapter 5 says verse 40 and 41 And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Here, 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 here's 41. Here's what 41 says. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his sake. So when you, are, when, when, when you are being hit down and you know that it is for the cause of Jesus Christ, Jesus says, rejoice. When people reject you because you are a Jesus follower, Jesus says, rejoice because what? You are blessed. Amen. Jesus adds a sweetener to it. In verse 10 that we did yesterday, he says, you are blessed because the kingdom of heaven is yours. The sphere where God rules and reigns is yours. And God lives in your hearts. But in verse 12, he says, rejoice for great is your reward in heaven. Glory to almighty God. Rejoice. Not only does God live in your heart now when you are faced in persecution. But he says, rejoice for in the future, great will be your reward. Great is your reward in heaven when Jesus shall reveal himself to this world. 1 Peter 4 verses 12 and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange. When the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange things happen to you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8 from the New International Version, the NIV. It reads, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. We're talking about your reward in heaven. Amen. Paul says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Glory to Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God that the last reward will not be given to Paul. Paul the apostle who lived thousands of years ago is not the only one who is going to be awarded with the crown of righteousness. But on that day, brothers and sisters, when we, we in this life remain faithful to Almighty God and we continue to serve him and to love him, Paul says, all of us who have longed for his appearing, we are going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad because we shall receive our reward. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you reward is in heaven for all of us as long as we remain faithful to god blessed are you blessed are you blessed are you youtube viewers blessed are you facebook viewers god bless your hearts as we continue to rejoice in our persecution can i tell you it is not easy it is not easy at all. Sister Shelley and Cooper, welcome on board. Bible way, Church of God, God bless you. 
Hallelujah. It is not easy to take persecution when you know say you're not doing nothing. When you know that you are not guilty. When you know that the thing that they are coming against you with, you had nothing to do with it. It's not easy. But just because you're a child of God, you are attacked. The enemy attacks you. Yes, Jesus says, blessed are you. James says, count it all joy. Peter says, think it not strange, but rejoice. Rejoice. Somebody today is facing persecution, left, right, and center. In your home, at your workplace, oh God, in your family, you are being persecuted. They, they revile against you. They come up against you strongly. Every day, every night you go to your bed, you cry and you shed tears. But I want to say to you today, God is telling you, rejoice. Rejoice. Before you became a child of God, before you accepted Jesus Christ, it wasn't this way. But since you took up your cross, your cross, cross is an indication of trial and testing and all kind of bangarang in Jamaica, we say that. All kind of trial and crosses. But when you take up your cross and begin to follow Christ, men will turn against you, revile you, persecute you and say all manner of things against you blessed are you when these things shall happen because the lord is on your side rejoice this morning in your situation don't give up don't curse god don't tell god that you are sorry that you started to be serving him i remember one woman saying that she she can't bother to read her bible she can't go too deep in god because when she go too deep in God, she face too much persecution. That's all right. Bring it on, devil. Every time that we get close to God, the devil comes at us harder. But that's okay. Because God says to us this morning, consider yourself blessed. Rejoice. Rejoice. So this 